All right, today we're going to go over some geometry basics vocabulary terms in order for you to earn back some missed points on part one of your geometry basics vocabulary assessment. So in this activity, we are going to look at the words, definitions, and diagrams of the vocabulary words that were on your test. And we're just going to kind of go over them and see some of the misconceptions and where we might have went wrong here. So a flat 2D surface that extends infinitely, that is called a plane. So a flat 2D surface that extends infinitely, that means forever, that is called a plane. So plane P, we've matched our notation here. And now we need to find a picture that goes with it. So if we look here, this would be the image for plane P because it is a flat 2D surface that extends infinitely. So it's going to keep going forever and ever and ever. Here, a portion of a line with two endpoints. So if it has two endpoints, I think the picture is going to be easiest to do first. We have three options here. And we know that two endpoints must be this one. So endpoints are where something starts and stops. So this has two endpoints and it is a line segment. So a portion of a line or a piece of a line that starts and stops is a segment. A series of points extending in both directions, that means that we're going to have arrows on both ends because we're gonna extend infinitely in both directions. So here would be our picture. Arrows on both ends means that we are looking at a line. So this is line AB. And then points, that was one that pretty much everybody got right on the vocabulary assessment. A point is an exact position or a location. So we label a point with a capital uppercase, oops, sorry, a capital print letter. All right, here, so same thing. We're gonna match the definitions and then the diagram or the notation with the vocabulary words. So a series of points that extend infinitely in one direction. So if we look back at what we just did, this new vocabulary word that we're talking about is kind of a combination of a segment and a ray. So, oops, sorry, no, a segment and a line, and it is called a ray. So a series of points that extends infinitely in one direction, that would be a ray. And here's our picture for that. It has one endpoint, and then it has one arrow because it goes forever in the direction of the arrow. And again, I kind of have to move some things around here, but that is called a ray. Now, if you put two rays together to share a common endpoint, that's actually how we create an angle. So two rays put together with a common endpoint is how we create, oops, that's not right, an angle. So if you look here at this picture of an angle, we have ray BA, and we have ray BC. We know these are rays because they have one endpoint and one arrow. The common endpoint is point B here, and that has a special name. It's called the vertex of an angle. So here, the common point of an angle or a corner that leads us right into our next definition, that's called a vertex. So if we look at this figure right here, the arrow is pointing to point B, B is the vertex of that angle. And when you look at your naming convention here, like how we name an angle, angle A, B, C, the middle letter in the naming convention is always, <coughs> excuse me, is always the vertex. All right, the last word we're gonna cover here, two or more angles that share the same vertex. So these are angles that are next to each other. They share a common endpoint and a common side and we call them adjacent angles. So if we look at our picture here, angle A, B, D, and angle D, B, C are adjacent because they are next to each other. They are touching. They share a common endpoint, which would be point B, and they share a common side, which would be ray B, D. So two or more angles that share the same vertex, adjacent angles. All right, here, a line, segment, or ray that splits an angle into two congruent parts. So we know when we're splitting something into two congruent parts, that means we are bisecting it. So 
we know our choices are either going to be angle bisector or segment bisector. Now we need to look at what the problem tells us we're splitting. It says we're splitting an angle into two congruent parts, so we know that we're talking about an angle bisector. And when you look at the picture of angle bisector, remember the most important part here when you're drawing your angle bisector is that you mark the two angles congruent. So here we can see that ray BD bisects angle ABC. So it cuts that angle into two smaller congruent angles. We know they are congruent because of that little half circle that is marked on each of them. So angle ABD would be congruent to angle DBC. All right, for the next one here, a line segment or ray that splits a segment into two congruent parts. So we know we're still talking about a bisector because we're splitting something into two congruent parts. And remember the prefix bi means two. But this time we're talking about a segment bisector. So if we look at this picture here, we know that that dotted line is a segment bisector for a couple reasons. First, if we look at point, um, sorry, A, B, that's a line segment because it has two endpoints. It starts and then it stops. So we know that AB is a segment. This dotted line is cutting it into two congruent parts because we can see it has congruence markers on AB. So from A to the center here has one congruence marker on it. From B to the center point has one congruence marker on it. So that's how we know our dotted line here is a segment bisector. The point here in the middle that this segment bisector goes through is called the midpoint. So that is a point that splits a segment into two congruent parts. So if we look here, our little picture, the arrow is pointing to the midpoint. We know this because from A to that midpoint has one congruence marker. From B to that midpoint, we have one congruence marker. That's telling us that those segments are congruent that our point there that the arrow is pointing to is exactly in the middle of segment AB. When you have a midpoint, you split a segment into two congruent parts. And here we have the symbol for congruent, and remember that congruent means of equal measure. So if two things are congruent, they're the same size, the same shape, the same measure. Everything is the same. All right, here we're talking about angles and angle measures. So an angle that is less than 90 degrees is an acute angle. Oops, that's not right. So remember, acute angles, they have to be more than zero degrees, but less than 90 degrees. So they're teeny tiny. When we look at pictures of them like this, angle ABC would be an acute angle. If an angle is exactly 90 degrees, that's a special type of angle, it is called a right angle. When you're looking at a figure, See how we have angle ABC here, how it has the box in the corner? That is showing the person looking at it that we have a 90 degree angle there. So anytime you see that box, you know you have a right angle. Now, if an angle is between, so if it's more than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees, we call that an obtuse angle. And here, angle ABC would be an example of that. Now, if an angle is exactly 180 degrees, it is a line, but if we want to name it as an angle, we call that a straight angle. And if you look at the picture here, it looks just like a line, but we would call it angle ABC, and point B would be the vertex. All right, last four problems we're gonna look at here are types of triangles. So a triangle with no congruent sides, we call that a scalene triangle. So that means all of the sides have different measures. You would have no congruence markers on your picture. And here would be an example of a scalene triangle. No sides are marked congruent. All right, for the next one, a triangle with two congruent sides and two congruent angles. Remember the little trick we talked about? You have two eyeballs. So an isosceles triangle has two congruent sides and two congruent angles. When we're looking at our pictures here, we wanna choose the one that has two sides marked congruent. 
And remember, those sides are called the legs. In an isosceles triangle, the two congruent sides are called the legs. And we want one that has two angles marked as congruent. So here we can see that side AB is congruent to side CB because they both have one little hash mark on them, one congruence marker. And then angle A is congruent to angle C because each of those angles have one little half circle. So isosceles triangle, two congruent sides, two congruent angles. An equilateral triangle in that everything is equal. So you have three equal sides or three congruent sides, and then you have three congruent angles. And as you look at our picture here, you can see that all three sides are marked congruent with the little hash marks. All three angles are marked congruent with the little half circles. Last one, a triangle that has a 90 degree angle, that's a right triangle, because remember a 90 degree angle is called a right angle. If you're looking at the triangle, to know it's a right triangle, you have to see that box down there. You have to see the notation marking it as a right angle.